In today's episode of Master Hacks, we're tackling migration challenges head on. Stick around and we'll show you how to avoid those migration meltdowns and keep your project on track. Hi, my name is Patrick and I'm a solutions advisor here at ShareGate. If you've done a migration before, you know it's not always smooth sailing. There are the usual suspects, delays, errors, throttling that slows you down, and suddenly the issues are piling up and you're scrambling to fix them. Today we're breaking down migration roadblocks and giving you some tried and true tips to handle them. Let's get hacking. Let's get the obvious out of the way. No migration is perfect. You're bound to hit some bumps along the way. For example, there's downtime like unexpected errors while trying to move large amounts of data or compatibility issues between your source and target environment that can bring your whole project to a standstill. Another example of a migration roadblock is throttling. It's called throttling because it limits the workload coming in or out of your server or environment. It's there for a good reason. It's meant to protect your system's integrity, but it can still annoyingly slow down your migration. Think of throttling like the speed limit on a highway, and Microsoft is applying the brakes for you to ensure you stay within their expected range, saying, hold up, you're doing too much, too fast. Throttling is totally normal. So if you experience it, you shouldn't worry. It's Microsoft's way of managing server loads and ensuring that everyone in your tenant cluster has a working environment. That said, there are a few ways to mitigate and deal with the impact of throttling, but more on that later. Permission problems are another challenge. Moving your team but forgetting their keys? <laughs> Not good. If users can't access their files or tools, your IT help desk is going to be swamped with support tickets and urgent requests. And let's not forget about inefficiencies, like when your data structure of your source and destination environment don't line up, which can cause all kinds of delays and confusion. Last but not least, there's data integrity. It's one of those challenges that can really throw a wrench into your migration if you're not prepared. Missing files, broken permissions, is the kind of stuff no one wants to deal with, but it's critical to address it early. Nothing's worse than wrapping up your migration, feeling like you're done, and realizing files are missing. It's the IT equivalent of unpacking after a move, but realizing you forgot your favorite mug. Now, let's talk about how to actually keep your migration running smoothly, even when things get tricky. First, let's start with managing downtime and those tight deadlines. Most Microsoft 365 migrations don't go exactly as planned. In fact, migration project timelines are often underestimated and end up taking on average, up to nine months longer than expected. That's a lot of time. You can speed things up by running migrations concurrently. Basically divide the workloads across multiple machines and schedule them to run the same time. It's like opening more lanes on a highway during rush hour. If one lane stalls, the others continue uninterrupted instead of bringing the entire project to a standstill. This trick can help you stick to your timeline and maybe even make up for lost time if things haven't gone as planned. Let's tackle throttling next. As mentioned earlier, it's likely something you can't fully avoid, but there are things you can do to mitigate its impact. For example, if you're using ShareGate Migrate, you can use distinct login credentials to access the source and destinations on each machine you're running. This helps limit the effects of throttling by preventing Microsoft from thinking that this traffic is coming from a single user, even though it's all the same source. It's also a good idea to schedule your migrations outside of your tenant's local business hours. If your migration runs at night or on the weekends, there are less chances that you'll be competing for bandwidth, ensuring that things run as smoothly as possible. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take an incremental approach to your migration. It lets users keep working in the source environment while you migrate content and ensures you capture any new or updated content along the way. But first, and this is a big one, run a test migration. This is likely the most important step as it allows you to see what's working and what isn't. Once you know how it performs and what needs tweaking, you can adapt your settings and optimize for speed and efficiency. Finally, use a tool that makes your life easier. This one should be a no-brainer. Microsoft offers migration tools, but they aren't exactly the easiest to work with and don't offer the most flexible options. You want something that simplifies the process, saves you time, covers all the angles, and takes as much stress as possible out of the project. A good tool helps you tackle inefficiencies right at the source by identifying stale sites, 
that are orphaned or unused, files with unnecessary versions, problematic templates that need to be addressed, and more. Cleaning this up before you start means you're only moving what's relevant, which speeds things up by removing the need to pick and choose what you want or don't want from the source, or by having to clean up your destination environment post-migration. Also, one of the biggest worries with any migration is keeping your data intact. No missing files, no broken permissions. So find a tool that makes sure the content and permissions are mapped correctly so that users have the right access in the new environment. Whether you're migrating from platform to platform like Google Workspace to Microsoft 365 or tenant to tenant. And use reporting tools that flag potential issues so you can fix them before they become a problem. For example, ShareGate's pre-check report shows you possible warnings and errors that could occur when you run the migration for real. The pre-check report provides information to ensure the source and destination are aligned on things like users, groups, supported features, and information architecture so you can address any misalignment and ensure the operation runs smoothly. Let's go over what we covered to tackle those migration roadblocks. Plan for and address roadblocks like downtime, throttling, and inefficiencies. Equip your team with smart strategies and tools for seamless execution. And most importantly, run a test migration first and optimize where necessary to ensure smooth migration experience. If you want to dive into these strategies, check out our webinar about mastering Microsoft 365 migrations in the description below. It's full of tips on planning, choosing the right strategy, and running your migration smoothly. That's it for this episode of Master Hacks. In the next episode, we'll talk about real-world migration scenarios like going from on-prem to the cloud. Don't miss it. Hit subscribe and tap the notification bell so you don't miss an episode.